to in essence like in essence you know in essence in essence it wouldn't in essence what we would in essence they wouldn't what we worked out was in essence we needed to analyze it with science So, don't usually do videos like this. That's what I can be. I'm whatever God needs me to be. Yo, I've had this video sent to me a couple of times, and in essence, it's messed up. That's John Singleton, Mr. In Essence. Wake me up, wake me up inside. Wake up. Can you imagine being an athlete who has done everything all year? You're fighting on a workout, which is every single second. It's not like you're doing Murph and there are tens of seconds that separate places. This is a workout like Fran, where everyone's going close to two minutes and you're doing everything you can to get as close as you can. And you're shaving off little fractions and then it isn't your fault when you don't hit that little metric that you're looking for. I'm talking about event number five, that one with the runner. You know, it's the competition to all machines. There's a machine in this event. There's a machine in that event and which events don't have machines there are way less events without machines than there are with machines we've talked about this the issue with this becomes really really bad when someone like me who does a workout in my garage i did this workout remember four and five i snatched 265 i babied out on 275 and i ran on the treadmill i gave a damn good effort i tried as hard as i freaking could i finished the run up in 327 and i was like okay we're gonna see if my treadmill is up to snuff if, is this thing accurate i talk about it in real time in that video where i'm doing the workout and i'm incredibly well aware that there are treadmills that are set up differently than other treadmills i figured that maybe over the next couple of years where my treadmill is a little bit older, Assault and CrossFit had figured something out and it's very evident through this conversation with Mr. John Singleton that that is not the case. I didn't think CrossFit would be so stupid to put a freaking treadmill in three of these workouts and not have their ducks in a row. It's unbelievable to me. Let's listen to what John has to say. But I think one thing that I thought would be interesting is to kind of be able to take people a little bit more behind the scenes. So kind of uh, one kind of thing to set the framework a little bit is uh, CrossFit has an appeals process. However, actually the appeals process, really you can just argue against uh, a scoring decision or if the weight was loaded wrong, you can't actually appeal a no rep or, or anything that happens on the floor. But what I want to do is focus a little bit on uh, something that happened last night during event five. He's damn right. I'll throw it on the screen. It was released sometime in April of this year for the 2023 season. We've had appeals. Cool. I mean, they've always had appeals, but they've got this new thing in here where you get two of them. And then if you get one wrong, then it's like the challenge system in the NFL. Like you throw the red flag and you lose a timeout. If you win your appeal, you get more and more and more appeals, which sounds great until you figure out that you can't have a no rep overturned. At the Zelos games, you remember the event finale where it kind of dictated who was going to win. There was a, a challenge called the act. We call them challenges. They call them appeals. And over the course of that challenge, we found out that the judge on the floor, while having done the right thing and sending the athlete back, we can reverse that call on the back end. And we did it. We have the technology. I believe it was Alex Kazan and a handstand walk. However, at the level of the CrossFit games, if that were to have happened, it's the judge's call on the floor and that athlete is screwed because while the judge was trying to hold a high standard, that high standard would have cost the athlete position spots and potentially a CrossFit games. This isn't a no rep talk though this is a treadmill talk and this is something that you actually can appeal if you look at the appeal section where it says you can't do no reps and whatnot you can argue machine miscalibrations and miss setting let's keep talking about that i'm alex tulis and i was like you know alex is a good runner see him across uh, crossfit competitions across europe and he got off the runner really slow and i was like it's unusual but you know in of itself it's not a normal then as the competition started going on with the next heat of girls, it was like, not only were they getting off late in event four, they were also finishing late in event five. And then some of the athletes would come where like the runner was sticky, something was up. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Everybody, everybody's like, CrossFit needs to be more professional, but by all means, it's like they're running a beer league softball team or they're running a wiffle ball game in their backyard. They're like, oh, this will be a good idea. Let's put an air runner in. And it makes sense, right? It's standardized. You don't have to run around the track. How are we going to make sense of this across every division, everywhere across the world? It doesn't matter! You're not going to make a track make sense. The air runner makes sense. The sled, in theory, is cool. Oh, yeah! But because they're essentially a beer league softball team and they're just trying to be like, uh, this softball is a little bit waterlogged. Well, it's okay. It's just a little waterlogged. Ah. 
throw it up and you hit it and you go, wow, that felt really heavy. Oh, whatever. We're all drunk. We don't care. But these people aren't drunk. These people are making careers off of it. And he brings up Alex Katulis. And the thing about this situation is John Singleton's a smart guy. He works with all these athletes. He's followed this guy's career. And he goes, he's a fast runner. What's going on? Alex Katulis finishes 26th on this. He's notably a good runner. What if you would have won this workout? If Alex Katulis wins this workout because maybe he has a treadmill that works or is maybe one of the fast treadmills, he's at the CrossFit Games. That's how that works. Patrick Vellner runs a time of 256. He's a good runner, but is he that good of a runner? How did he do at the CrossFit Games in the 500 meter sprint that one year? Did he win? I think that was Guy Mel Harris. And while we're thinking about Guy Mel Harris, everyone knows that dude's strong, right? Imagine there's a situation where he's on the floor, they're doing a one rep snatch, and everyone's like, yeah, let's go. And then he hits a 260 snatch, and everyone's thinking, huh? What the hell? 260? You, you, you did 291 as a freaking 16 year old at the CrossFit Games. Everybody would look at that thing with a really close microscope. And then you look at the barbell and you spin the barbell and you find out that that bushing isn't spinning. Like, what, what is this? The powerlifting bar from Lifetime? Are you kidding me? Where's the good bar? Why does everyone else have an Olympic weightlifting bar? And he's got some piece of crap rusted thing from the 70s. He goes, yeah, there, I felt like there was something sticky here. It's exactly what's happening with these treadmills. But because for some reason it's a treadmill or a sled, they just say, it doesn't matter what you think. Let's hear them say whatever. The thing was that everything was happening in one particular lane. And what actually happened after the event is everyone came together and was like, something wrong with uh, the machine. So the athletes then decided to put an appeal uh, regarding the machine because they weren't appealing a no rep. What they were trying to appeal was there was something not working correctly with the machine, which inside CrossFit's rule book is uh, something that's appealable. Two things here. Yes, this is appealable. Two, there's 11 or so athletes who are all trying to get on CrossFit. They go, hey, there's something going on here. Can you take a look at it? There's more to come with that. It's not just, hey, this thing's slow. Check it out. But also, I remember hearing in the east there was a fast lane. They were talking about an event number one, which remember also had a treadmill. And people were speculating that there was something about the texture on the floor of the sled that made the sled easier to pull. But remember, there was also a 2,000 meter run in there. What if that treadmill was a fast treadmill and everyone in that lane was getting off quicker and having a bit of an advantage? I think it was lane 13 in the east. Um, so in essence, what we were told is that all of the runners were calibrated and they didn't see a problem with that. CrossFit's kind of process for calibrating a runner is they will run on the runner um, to get it going, they will then kind of jump off the runner and see how many times the belt spins round. <laughs> it's good, right? It's good. And that's their method for making sure that all runners are calibrated. Now, this makes me think of a science experiment. A science experiment. That's we science. I do with my buddy Will in high school. We remembered going into a chemistry class and we had a professor that tried to teach us, or maybe it was foods, I don't know. We had every class together. They tried to convince us that a pot of cold water would boil faster than a pot of hot water. So what we did during our lunch break that day where we would go to my house and eat lunch is we filled up a pot of cold water and we filled up a pot of hot water. We put them on the stove and we just sat there and we watched it and we wanted to know what would happen. And we looked at the pots of water and then bubbles started to come up and we we're like, okay, it's happening. Oh my God, we can't believe it. The science teacher, the food teacher was right. We don't know which teacher it was, but they were right. Wow, that's cool. Science is awesome. Is that what you think? You think? How is it possible that while that one started hotter, this one got hotter quicker? It's not supposed to make any sense. It makes no sense. How can we possibly determine that? I believe it was six or seven months later, we were looking at the stove. We were making some macaroni and cheese or something. Remember, this is high school. And we looked and we go, dude, dude. Remember that science experiment we did? That one right there, the flames are smaller. Freaking gas stove top had different heating elements. This one had a much bigger flame than this one. It was just the way the stove was made up. So we redid the experiment. Lo and behold, the science teacher, the food teacher was wrong. Of course the hot water boiled quicker. And the only reason that we thought that is because we're freaking idiots and we didn't look at the stove top beforehand. We were like, put them on the stove too, it's gonna get hotter faster. CrossFit is putting people running on a treadmill. It's like, hey, I need you to run. Okay, now we're gonna count the lines. Uh-huh. They're worse than my idiot friend and I were in high school putting water on stovetops without realizing that everything is different. You cannot make this stuff up. Beer league softball, idiot high schoolers. That is who is in charge of the CrossFit team right now. I can keep on talking about this, but let's keep listening. And in essence, they wouldn't um, accept an appeal 
if we couldn't get some demonstrable form of information. What we worked out was, in essence, we need a device that measures consistent power or can produce consistent power, and then we can track that on the machines. This is nine o'clock on, uh, on a Saturday night in Berlin. You know, I tried to, uh, to find something called some people, but it, it didn't happen because we had to get the answer by like seven o'clock the next morning if it was to be accepted. I'm not really sure if he noticed this or if any of the 11 athletes that tried to put this appeal in realized this, but he just told me that over the course of one day, it was his job to find some sort of a mechanism that could produce consistent power on the belt of a treadmill to try to convince CrossFit that that machine wasn't right. Yeah, let's just flip a coin. We need 50 coins. And then 50 more, 50, 50. You need to come up with a method better than our super scientific I'm gonna run on the treadmill and count the white lines on the end of it method. And you've had to do so in less than 24 hours over and it's unbelievable. I've got an engineering buddy and we took apart a couple of assault bikes. We took apart the echo bike and we were going to do this test. We were trying to figure out the power difference between an assault bike and an echo bike. We wanted to see which one was harder at a certain RPM, certain wattage. Everybody thinks the echo bike is harder. We wanted to find out exactly how much harder it was. And he's been ripping apart treadmills off of Facebook to try to get this test done. And my assault bike is still sitting in pieces in my garage because we want to do this test. But it's up to John Singleton and whomever he can find on the internet to find something. And I'm I'm thinking those things that cars run on, you know, in mechanic shops, get this car up to 60, put the car on a belt, run it. It sits there in place. They rev it up. They're testing the horsepower on whatever muscle car machines they've got. I, in the back of my head, just think, hey, get a one wheel and ride the one wheel at seven miles an hour on the treadmill and see how far it gets in a minute. Maybe even just get a bicycle and run that bicycle on there with a little mechanism on there that tells you how quick the tires are turned around on that bicycle. So at least the bicycle has been simplified. And at the end of that experiment, you find out that the runners are different, but nope, nothing was done. They did some, they did some math though. Let's listen to the math they did. So what we decided to do um, is actually uh, Mike, who you know I follow on Instagram, is like one of the good data analysts for uh, for CrossFit, and he was super helpful. So what we did is we tracked uh, just so this isn't the event time that you see in the Excel. If you've seen the Excel, this is actually just from the runner. So the time the athlete got on to the time the athlete got off. We took every heat, every lane. And we started to build up this pool of data. And the one thing I didn't want to do is just go to cross it like, I felt that the runner was slow. We were trying to find some objective evidence. And basically we worked through the night and actually realized that lane number eight was slower. What we wanted to do was appeal the runners for lane number eight, and we weren't asking for anything crazy. Every heat, every athlete, every time that we're gonna see is most of them are kind of sort of the same, but what you will see is that there's one lane that's vastly quicker and one lane that's vastly slower. I'll plug them in right here. You can see the Excel sheet, but the average placing of that lane was 7.9. And then the best one was what? Two point something up, 2.8. And that's the average finish of that treadmill. A five point discrepancy over the course of how is that 12 heats and 120 athletes seems rather statistically significant if you ask me. What we found was that actually, if you were in some lanes, for example, lane seven, that you would probably finish inside the top three in your heat. Lane eight, you'd finish inside the bottom three. All we did is ask CrossFit to take us down to the next step. So if you've seen the document, there's kind of like, there's quite a few runners that finish you close to top three, runners that finish you five, and then runners that finish you in six. We wanted to move from 7.9 to in essence like 6.8 or something like that, which isn't a huge drop for the athletes, but I think it's an acknowledgement that something was wrong. CrossFit's argument um, of not doing anything was that basically each runner has a standard deviation that's accepted. CrossFit didn't know what that standard deviation was. And in essence, you know, there's only so much that we can do for, for the athletes. They admit that there is a difference in the treadmills. They admit it. They know that there's a difference in the treadmills. And there are 10 of them on the floor. And each of them is different. And you're playing Russian roulette with the athletes in the treadmills in the lanes. I mean, hell, you want to put the tinfoil hat on and say, we want this athlete in this lane at this time. Or maybe they shift the treadmills around. Or maybe the night before, they're lining up the treadmills. It's like, hey, we're going to pay off the uh, team of people putting treadmills out there. We know that that treadmill is fast. We want that in that lane so our athlete gets to the CrossFit Games. And we need our athlete in the CrossFit Games because these sponsors will have these eyes on this athlete and we need to make sure it happens. No mercy. 
They're admitting, it'd be like the NFL admitting that they know that they gave Tom Brady deflated football so that he could be the one to make whatever freaking Super Bowl he won of the 50 he won. It'd be like the freaking Astros and having the MLB admit that they knew that they were cheating, that stealing people's signs with a freaking trash can bangs in the dugout. CrossFit, the organization, admits that they know that there's something wrong with the way that they're doing things and they say, well, we don't care about your stats. We're not going to do anything. We don't know what a standard deviation is. Idiot. Beer league watered down. High school idiots playing a game with people's lives. Each runner has an accepted peer, um, accepted deviation. We don't actually, or they don't actually know what that deviation is. There's no real way to, or they don't have a real way to calibrate the assault runner. Assault runner don't, or CrossFit don't. The teams also had the runner. So the inconsistency of the runner created what we would argue is an unfair test for the athletes on board. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do is create fairness across uh, the board for athletes. That's the gist of it. There's a little summation right there, but also the teams have these runners as well, right? The runner is cool. It's cool as a training tool. And there were reasons to believe that it shouldn't have been in competition. There were reasons to believe that the sled was a complete freaking nightmare in the competition. But now we know that CrossFit as an industry has spoken to like at least John Singleton and has stated that they know that there is something wrong with them, but we don't really know and there's nothing we can do about it, but we're still gonna put them in the freaking competition. Why didn't they just have shuttle runs? I mean, they had shuttle runs in every other stage of the comp. Why not this one? I know I was at the East and it was massive. People said that the West was massive. Figure out a way to make them run around the goddamn competition. It's instances like this that I realize the type of people that I'm yelling at. You kind of start to feel bad that they're so stupid. They're so stupid. At least when they had the runner back when they did the triple three, it was the triple three. You're running a 3K. And if it's off by 10 or whatever meters, it's what? A handful of seconds and then it's a third 30 minute event but on this event which is separated by fractions of a second for every single athlete and they're sprinting as hard as they can and they've worked all year to get there and they're going to admit that it's got a huge discrepancy treadmill to treadmill and I knew this when I was doing it and I was open to the fact that if I had a good time maybe it's because I have a fast treadmill in my garage and I've known this Forever. The treadmill that I had at the affiliate, when I would run a 5K on that, I don't know what the hell was up with it, but I couldn't get a time under 25 minutes. And I was trying. And I wasn't a terrible runner. I wasn't great. But then I saw somebody on the internet get something like a 21 minute 5K. And I go, there's no way that you are four minutes better than me at three miles. There's no way. It's been Taylor's oldest time. I've known it since 2016 or 17, whenever we got that freaking runner. And they're supposed to be the people who are in charge of this governing body organization that is CrossFit. Harvey dead. Can he be trusted? Well, he seems to be about the best that we've been. They can't be trusted, and it's gonna get worse. I cannot wait for the CrossFit Games. And Riller, out. Please smash that like button. No one touches their now seem legend. So in essence, like, in essence, you know, in essence, it's the competitions. In essence, it wouldn't. In essence, what we would. In essence, they wouldn't. What we worked out was, in essence, we need a device 